looking forward to seeing that. Welcome to Game Day Battle with Cleveland Sports News. Okay. It's biased and outspoken opinion. Full complement of Game Day crew here tonight. A huge show. I think it's going to be pretty much a Brown-centered show. Is oh, that yeah. about right? Um, we've had a lot of activity with the Browns. Uh, mainly, we have a new head coach, and that is uh, Rob Chudzinski. Are we giving him a lead? Yeah. Um, we can say it's not Pat Shermer. It's not. a positive note. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they, we did lose out on, on the top choices that it appeared that Haslam and Banner had and might have kind of rushed to, to get Chudzinski. So that's basically the question, you know, uh, is, is this the first sign of maybe failure on the part of this oh. regime? You've, we've had lost out on two top, top choices and then had to settle for uh, Chudzinski. So um, is it the sign of failure? Did they rush too quick maybe to, to get Chudzinski? Nobody else is looking at him. That's a short fucking race, man, if you think we failed already. <laughs> Go. Done. <laughs> at least maybe a, a first sign of failure. I mean, these guys are, these guys are new at it. Yeah. They've never done, neither one of these guys have ever done this before. So they can, they, they can fail a few times along the way, as long as they get the general picture right, maybe. Um, Ken Wisenhut was their uh, top choice by all accounts from what I can read. And the story is that they couldn't agree like on how much power he was going to have and how much power Banner was going to have. Is this a problem? Is this why we had to settle for an offensive coordinator? Mm. And is Banner a little stubborn maybe? Are we going to find that moving mm. forward? Also, um, they're looking possibly at Pagano, bringing him, uh, uh, John Pagano, bringing him from, uh, from San Diego. He was the defensive coordinator for San Diego. And along with that, that along with that, <laughs> Noel Turner is... Pretty much so happening here, I believe, good. by the time this airs. Okay. Yeah. He'll be locked in. So um, uh, we're basically the Cleveland Chargers. Is that kind of what's happening here? And that's oh. what Jadzinski wants. Oh, that's why. No with that. And now we're First Energy First Stadium. Energy that's Chargers. Power Chargers. Even though it's yeah. Cleveland Public Power that gives them their power. But yeah. Yeah. Well it's done, pretty, though, Dan. pretty weird. <laughs> Um, so, okay, we, we, that, we just talked about a lot of change, a lot of things that have happened. Um, new coach, new offensive coordinator, likely new defensive coordinator. Maybe new, new uniforms? New oh. uniforms happening. Oh. Yeah, I have that picture out there they've, on Facebook. They've petitioned the league for that, and also we have a new stadium name. Is this enough of a fresh start for everybody? I mean, does this really wipe the slate clean? Or is it still time for massive player turnover for you to feel like, we have started from scratch with something new and something better. Um, and we've got to talk about the stadium name. Brown Stadium is no more. It is now First Energy Stadium. Have we lost some history? Was there history there to lose? And do you feel like, like it's a bad thing or does it even matter? So um, let's just, just whip down the table here real quick. Ramon Torres and uh, always sporting some Browns love. Uh, we have a resident hockey expert here. That is Brett Finnegan. Got the Barons going the Barons on today. Jersey. That's that's pretty badass. That yeah, I bought a Barons jersey. Got the ad. Awesome. Got the monster. Yeah, we're good. Good stuff. Dale Shans Tersey. What's up, guys? Wearing the Andy jersey while he's still on the team. Yeah, enjoy that now. I like it. I like it. <laughs> May not be much longer. Six yeah. more months, maybe. Yeah. Possibly. And I'm Mike Glass, and I think that we should just dive right into this coaching situation. Game Day Battle is brought to you by Bamboozles Restaurant and Lounge in Parma. They have the best drink specials anywhere. Seriously, buy one, get one free drinks. How often do you hear of it? You don't. They do it twice a week. Billy's mom makes the pasta sauce all the time, and the burgers, you simply won't find a better one. Check them out, bamboozles.com. Again, bamboozles.com. When you go there, tell them GDB sent you. There. Number one. All right, so um, we did, I say we as in a collective Cleveland, lost out on our owners, uh, the Brown, Browns owners, first choice and second choice. They then grabbed Rob Chijinsky, which um, we... Uh, Keep going, you're good. <laughs> I was trying the Jedi mind trick on my beer. Oh, it worked. Oh, it's working. There it comes. You have the power. Um, so we rushed to get a guy that used to be an offensive coordinator here. And uh, I think we kind of liked him. I mean, he had a good year here. Then was canned. I think that was the end of Cornell's era, I think, right? Good year. That, that was a mm -hmm. phenomenal year. Yeah. 10 and 6. Uh, but he actually, after that, couldn't get a job as an offensive coordinator and had to become a tight end coach again. And that's where he came from. And uh, that's the time he spent out in San Diego. Uh, it seems to have fallen in love with Norv Turner. 
at that point in that whole system. He's got a man crush on him. I think he kind of does. And that's kind of, if you it's read some of his quotes, that's kind of what he said. Um, so then he went to he went to uh, Carolina, right, Panthers? Yep. And, um, and took their offense and made it less productive. And then we hired him as our coach. You got a half uh, half empty glass over there, Mike. Well, that's all right. We're gonna have to fill that fucker up. Okay. Well, here's on. and that's the, that's mainly the question. Do you, do you think that since we we lost out on on their first two picks, one of them in Chip Kelly, who is now going to Philadelphia, uh, Chip Kelly, mm. maybe. But that was that was their. Was second. that a home run? Was that a guaranteed home run, Chip Kelly? Come Not on. the question. The question is, if these were their two top guys, and they weren't able to make it happen. Is it a sign of maybe a problem? They went with a guy who's going to accept a job anywhere as a head coach. So um, it's not a good sign. Do, do we look at that sort of as a failure for them? And do you think that they rushed a little too quick to get Chudzinski? I, I think that they got their guy. That, that's what it came down to. Right. They had a list, and of course you would going into any process like this. Mm-hmm. Um, Chip Kelly seemed like a good opportunity, but he wasn't a fit for our team. I think everybody here will agree on that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, all the talks just kind of ceased for a little bit. And then we started hearing some crazy names. Mike, the guy that you talked about, what was his name? Hey, he's a, he's a head coach Mark right Tressman. now. Yeah, the, Mark Tressman. Mark Tressman. Mark Tressman. Mark Tressman. I mean, a CFL Bears. coach. That, that didn't seem Going to, Chicago. To, to interest anybody. So, um, This guy interested me. They, they, they wouldn't give somebody a job that they didn't believe in. Rob Chizinski, I, 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 I like it. He's not Pat Shermer, number he's one. That's, that, that's huge to me. And, you know, as, as Cleveland fans, we're kind of just... We're just used to the pain of every sport that nobody wants to come here. We all realize that. It, it's tough to get a high-profile coach to come coach a Cleveland team. So you got to work within your limits and get who you can. they got a Cleveland guy that loves Cleveland Browns football. He wants his team to win as, 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 a, as a, you know, a businessman and as a fan. Uh, I like what he did with the Browns when he was here, 10-6. and six, And be honest, when was the last time you saw them air the ball out like that? It was good stuff. It was. I mean, it's 17 touchdowns for Braylon Edwards and uh, 1,000 yards for Winslow. Derek Anderson never looked better than he did that year. Mm-hmm. Um, let's, not, let's not dog him for what he did in Carolina. That, that's a different offense. You have a mobile quarterback that can run. It's different than just airing the ball out all the time. But I'm on board because I'm a Cleveland Browns fan, and this is it. We got our new era. We got our new owner. We're going to have a new stadium name, new uniforms. The old Browns are dead, and if you're a Browns fan, then you're on the train right now because you believe that the guy who took over ownership of this team wants to win, and he's not going to put just some loser out there to, to be the first coach of his future business, his, his life story, you know what I mean? So uh, if, if they're comfortable with Rob Chizinski, so am I, and I want to see what he can do, and I'm anxious to see what he can do with this team, and uh, you guys should be, you, will show, you all should be happy. You know, Seriously, I think he did, uh, we did get our guy, and um, I think they had a game plan from day one and who they wanted to get. Obviously, if you're meeting with uh, Tim Kelly for two days straight and nothing went down, you know, obviously he wasn't coming here. Um, you should know right off the bat, you know, the guy you want. You're interviewing somebody, you should know the qualifications they have and know that fits your team. And this guy has been here twice, so obviously he knows, you know, what's going on in this organization, you know, and he, he's from here. So he has love for the game and also for the, you know, for the team and everything that comes with this town. Well, and, and so I'm hearing from the two of you basically that losing out on the top two, which is part of the process, not a big deal, not really a loss for the regime, but just part of the process and kind of expected, but that Chudzinski wasn't a massive step down from the, from the first two guys. Well, I'm third. pretty sure they probably wanted Lovey Smith or, you know, they talk big, to him, big they names didn't... like that, but like Dale said, they're not going to come here. And it's, for to them guys, it's like a step back. This guy sees it as a challenge, and that's what I like. Somebody who wants to step in and see this as a challenge and step up to the plate and try to take this team somewhere. Well, and, and we're hoping that he does, and that that in some way this team moves forward. And, and Brett, are you are you are you feeling a lot like uh, just part of the process? They they really didn't lose um, in a big way with these missing out on these first two guys. This is what I think. I think Chip Kelly was here for an interview, or he wasn't comfortable with being in the NFL. He wanted to go back to college. I think, I think Haslam and Banner did the right decision. If you're trying to bring in a head coach, he's not comfortable with what he's doing right now. Then why are you going to waste his time trying to get him? Uh, well, Philadelphia did. That I think that actually was a gimmick. I it's think that was a better a, fit. I, and yeah, it's a better fit. I think it was a gimmick. I think he just set it out there like. 
so nobody else would come after him. In the history of Chizinski actually worked with Kozar. Think mm -hmm. Kozar is going to get involved in the organization now? I hope so. I would love Kozar as a as like a quarterbacks coach type thing because he can read a defense like no other. Yes, he slurs words. Yes, yes. he can't talk, but you know. he can't talk. But you know what? He picked defenses apart when he played because he can read them. He can read the three four, the four three, nickel, whatever you want him to do. And you know he knows the game too, and you want to have that around, especially with a young team. You want to have older, you know, alums that that can give advice to your new guys. Mm -hmm. And what better, what better, uh, you know, what better names than Bernie Kosar? And let's see Jim Brown get come yeah, back around come the back. team and, and walk the sidelines like he used to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That is Cleveland Browns football. Mm -hmm. And Randy Lerner didn't care, or yeah, Randy Lerner didn't care about any of that. Maybe Al did, but I mean, it's all known that Randy didn't want this team. So literally, let's. That's been 15 years of, of garbage football of an owner that had no idea what the hell he was doing. Mm -hmm. And now we got a guy up there. Now it's a regime change from the top. You rarely get new own, new owners in sports. You get right. new GMs and new everybody mm -hmm. in Yana. Mm -hmm. It's always the same guy writing the checks. Now it's not. It's a different attitude. And I do not think that Jimmy Haslam, Jimmy Truckstop, spent a billion dollars on the Browns to, to, to watch these guys fail. This is this is their chance to put out their best foot their best foot forward. What's the product that they're going to be on the table? And it started with their head coach. And some people may not agree, but I think for the caliber of, of what we need and what it takes to be a Cleveland Browns coach, I think this is a great hire. Yeah, you know, nobody, I, I think, can question the, um, the desire for ha from Haslam and, and Banner. The, the concern only is that Haslam's never done any of this. And Banner's never really done any of this. He's been kind of part of one oh. coach, and that was Andy Reid. But they've never done any of this before. So you you have to wonder, at least, while they probably believe very strongly in what they're doing, and these could be good decisions, is it possible that there could be other things getting in the way? You know, I mentioned uh, in, in the opening that uh, Ken Wisenhut was was part of their, their top two uh, selection. Uh, the two people that they wanted was, uh, and, and he was the one that they really were targeting. They couldn't come to terms with him on how much power he would have and how much power Banner would have. Now, that could all be in our favor. That could have all worked out for the best for us. But is it also something where they are kind of getting big headed now? I mean, remember when Mangini was able to bring in his own GM and he brought in uh, Kokinas? And there was some sort of crazy ass, big headed, arrogant crap going on there that. We still don't know the whole story, um, and there's nothing to stop these guys at this point. These two guys are, are in it together, and they really are probably feeling like whatever they do is right because it's what they want to do. They could be wrong on a lot of things. I think you really hit the nail on the head by saying, you know, right the stuff, the people that we've brought in before and the way they're switching up now. I think with that man genie stuff was just complete bullshit. We brought a guy in, we let him have all the power, and he took us nowhere. We gave this guy, yo, yeah, you can hire your own GM, you can hire, you know, your own offensive coordinator, your defensive, like all this power, and what it do got us nowhere. Uh, all right, so we have a small amount of time left. We're introducing a new segment tonight to GDB. It is the two-minute warning. No, two-minute drill. I'm sorry, two-minute drill. And we're just zipping some topics out. Quick, quick thoughts. And we got uh, a timer going. Actually, so we are under the gun right now. Brett, started. All right, so um, cycling has been exposed for uh, institutionally covering up doping. Was Lance Armstrong? right or wrong for doing it since everybody else was? I think he was definitely wrong for doing it, but I think he already made his bed, and if he was going to tell the truth, he had the opportunity to do that. You take that to the grave, Lance Armstrong. Your career's finished. You know what I say about that? It was my live strong. Get it out of here. Get it out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> he actually beat cancer, so oh, I don't know what they had to do with that, but uh, I think he should have just kept his mouth shut and kept all his endorsements and all that stuff keep going, but uh, yeah, he should have stayed quiet. Well, you know, I think that if everybody's doing it and you can do it and you're actually still better than them, 
hats off to you, Lance. It was all a bunch of crap, but it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> all right, next topic. Uh, no one made the Baseball Hall of Fame. Does it matter? Do you care? Is it a big deal since it was doping-related, the reason that they didn't? Uh, it was weird to see uh, nobody get voted in this year. Um, they're going to have to uh, acknowledge the steroid era. It was a part of baseball. They let it be a part of baseball. Maybe give these guys asterisks, but eventually you're going to have to put McGuire and Sosa and Bonds and all of them in. I, I think people could have been uh, voted in this year. Like you had uh, BGO in there. You had Morris in there. You had um, the catcher from L.A., Yep, cool. Yeah, okay, cool. Piazza. Uh, you could, yeah, Piazza, you, could, you had him on there. He could have been in there also. You had three players. You had to go all out. Um, but steroids was part of baseball. They didn't They didn't tap it out, so that's it. Steroids, who cares? You still got to go out there and hit the ball. You do have to go out there and hit the ball, but they could have uh, brought in somebody else, like you said, that didn't dope. Nice statement, bringing the doping guys in at a later date. All right, LeBron talk is heating up. It's actually becoming more of an, a reality that – he wants to come back here and that we're possibly clearing out cap space. Good? They're clearing out cap space, yes. Bullshit, LeBron said he wants to come back here. I, I don't want to come back. I could care less. Yeah, <laughs> who cares? I say who cares as well, and I think we're just under the wire. And there it is. There's yeah. the buzzer. How about a little overtime? We had one more. You want to hit some overtime? Hit some overtime? All right, all right. Yeah. So there was a uh, finish up as a tie game. That was my bad. So yeah. we just have, uh, have one more round of, uh, of overtime. Um, the hockey, the lockout has been lifted. Only 48 games. Is that even a season? Is it worth watching? I mean, I, I think they should have just skipped it. I mean, I, you don't want to give somebody some cheap Stanley Cup win and let them be all happy that they won it and have them really not mean anything exactly Maybe. like that uh, like yeah. that basketball championship that we saw. But I'll probably still watch some hockey. I'm in a fantasy hockey league, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really waiting for uh, the Cleveland Monsters. So that's that's the ultimate. You give us a hockey team, we deserve one. Um, it could have been a washout. It could be either way. I think they're trying to just save the season. Uh, I will be watching some hockey. Is I think I'm the only one on this panel that really is a diehard hockey fan. But I'll be watching it. It could have been a washout. I would have been happy. I think they're just trying to sever like the NBA. The NBA did it. Hockey could do it. So. Um, I'm glad to see that they are back. I mean, it's job. They need a paycheck, you know. But... Um, they could have watched it. Uh, I don't. I like Dale said with a cheap, you know, Stanley Cup. Just you know, let's let it go. Start fresh next year. Get everybody on there, you know, because they're gonna injuries happen and all yeah. this other stuff. You know, get these guys, you know, preseason, get into midseason form and stuff like that. Other than that. I said he should have just let it go. Look, as a sports fan, I hate to see this stuff, but from a business perspective, you don't lose out on the Stanley Cup. You don't lose out on your big game and your playoffs. you got to do it. If you can have ten games and, and have the playoff run, it's cheap, it's sleazy, but there's a lot of money involved. It's just do the it. way he likes it. It's total sleazy. <laughs> so One reason I feel that nobody needs an assault rifle in their house. Yeah, they do. Uh, yeah, you should what? A minimum to protect yourself from the U.S. government. Yep. You'll need more than 30 rounds to fucking hold them off. Let me yep. Tell you that. That's why it's in the Constitution. It even says in there to protect the people from their government. Back then, they had little muskets with one ball. But everybody so, uh, did. Nowadays, the military's going to come with assault rifles to take you down. How come Barack Obama won't let armed guards at my kid's school, but his kids get to walk around with armed guards 24-7? Mm. Why is my kid's school a no a no gun zone, but his kids get armed security twenty four hours a day everywhere the they go? Daughter, the president no, it's gets bullshit. Cigarettes. It's bullshit. That means that guns are good enough to protect his family, but not good enough for me to protect mine. That's exactly what that means to me. Yeah, so, right. It's a hypocrisy. And any yeah, it's uh, all the hypocrite. all the stars and, and and politicians that are for. Oh, yeah, guns. Yeah, that's been, we'll call that's the people been the with government. guns. Yeah, them. Them. I voted for Obama because he was not Mitt Romney, but his views on guns, it's fucked up, dude. Dude, I'll win you over eventually. It's fucked up. I'll have you. You'll be a Republican before long. Mm -hmm. It'll happen. They, they both got to go. The whole system's fucked. Libertarian? There, there's even, no, there's even people out there trying to break it up because all the time that's wasted from these people not being able to agree on anything, Hell that's yeah. why nothing yeah. ever gets done. There's just fucking shit up even more. And there's no way that you're 100% Democrat on issues, and there's no way that you're 100% Republican. Maybe you're pro-abortion, pro but you're, you're anti-gun or vice versa. You don't feel the same way about everything. And the only way that we're going to progress as a nation is to fucking 
drop the red versus blue, the us versus them, and be on the same page, and let 30 people run for president, and let the people actually have a say-so instead of the two puppets that they put up on the fucking pedestal and tell us which one we hate less. Well, it used to be, hey, it used to be that the voting days were big drunk party days. Nowadays, people are like, eh, maybe I'll make it, maybe I won't. Yeah. Maybe I just won't even show up. So we've got a small amount of time left and just enough for the raising of the beer. It's our chance to sort of spout off, uh, as Dale so eloquently did, or, uh, or praise somebody, or just, uh, just talk about whatever we want to for a few minutes. And I think I'm going to start all the way at the end of the table, and that is Ramon Torres. Well, just to brush up on something that Dale said, which is true, is that uh, we do have gun rights here, and, you know, guns don't kill people, people do. And it's by choice, you know, it's who you are as a person and the values you have, I think, instilled in yourself that go make you go out and do stupid things. Um, as an avid, you know, person who who owns guns, who's been out there shooting and stuff like that, it's about how how you you live your daily life and, you know, you don't go back and look at a gun as a as something to hurt somebody with, you know. As a, it, as a sport is what you look at it as, to go out and have some fun, you know, something you can take your kids to do and teach them, you know. It is, you know, it's just that people do things and it just fucks it up for everybody else. That's what it comes down to, you know. And now the government's getting involved into it and now they're just trying to rid you of everything, you know. Anything that has to do with them having less power is the shit they're trying to get rid of, you know. So that's all I got and I think it's fucked up what they're trying to do and so if you got guns, keep them and... Go buy some more before they take them all away. Well, I'll drink to that too, and I'll kind of roll that in, uh, in a one, my first of three, if you don't mind there, Go Mike. Go for it. Go for it. Gun control is less about guns and more about control, is, is basically what it comes down to. And I understand the, the thought process of wanting to ban assault weapons, and you don't use them for deer hunting, and you don't need to stop a robber with an assault weapon. But the one thing that you do need is what a lot of people just fail to, to realize, and, and that is why the Second Amendment is in our Constitution to begin with, and that is to protect yourself from your government. Because government gets corrupt. They knew it in the 1700s, they know it now. That's why they put the provision in there. Because absolute power corrupts, or power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And the first key to taking over a nation is disarming its people. Those were the practices of Hitler, and uh, Stalin, and and uh, all kinds of terrible people before them. So uh, these are our rights, and uh, as an American, you should be pissed that, they're, that they want to take these away from you. And I'm all for child safety. I have kids in schools, but there's different measures that can be taken as opposed to taking everybody's guns away because uh, meth and heroin are still legal, but the fucking criminals and drug addicts, they still get their hands on it, don't yep. they? And a criminal doesn't care if the law states he can only have 10 rounds in his gun or 15. It's just, it's ludicrous to try to do massive change over a couple crazy people. If you even believe into that shit anyways, there's all kinds of conspiracy talk. I won't get into any of that uh, deep shit, but just do some research and try to protect your freedoms because it starts with one. It starts with one. Yep. And once you're ready you to give up one, one, you're going to give up uh, a lot more. So uh, gun control is a hot topic right now, and it's not because things might change. It's because things are going to change. They've already signed, uh, that crazy New York mayor already signed new legislation into law. In New York, you cannot have a clip with more than ten, or actually I believe it's seven rounds. Uh, so they, they want you to still have something to protect your family, but not enough to take out somebody that might really matter. And it all comes down to what you believe in and... I'm pro guns, so definitely I think they disagree. Uh, back to the sports world. Sorry, the political action had to take us down a little bit. I want to raise my beard to Peyton Manning. A uh, great story, him sticking around after that tough loss to Baltimore. After Ray Lewis did all his interviews to to personally congratulate him and his family waited after, and I just think that's a great story. And a uh, you know, true professionals out there, two future Hall of Famers, uh, even though he lost, still ready to to you know show some pride and and uh, congratulate Ray. Uh, also, Atlanta Falcons, first playoff win in a very long time for them. That was a great game. Pete Carroll with that bonehead call of uh, trying to ice the kicker, and he missed it. Don't know why we haven't been hearing about that uh, all weekend, but I guess they're giving Pete Carroll a free slip. But uh, the playoffs are very exciting this year, and I'm looking forward to uh, some national or some uh, division championships here and a fantastic Super Bowl. So, 
to playoff football. Hell yeah, hell yeah. We'll do that. Mr. Finnegan. All right, I'm actually going to read this off here. Uh, I'm going to raise my beer here. Uh, actually, it's an email I got from uh, Olivier, who has, uh, for you that have no idea, he is the uh, PA announcer for the Cleveland Cavaliers, and he's the in-game on-camera host for Lake Erie Monsters. Uh, he's actually going to be doing, uh, they call the Cupid's Nation Undies Run. This is pretty weird, but they're actually going to raise money, and uh, in February, they're going to run around Tremont to raise uh, money for neurofibromatosis. Um, for like uh, Nicole right here, it's a little description. It's, she's a seven-year-old um, kid who loves dolls and Mickey Mouse stuff like that. But she's got to take undergo appointments, MRIs, undergo diagnosed with the neurofibromatosis or whatever. I can't really say it, but um, they're gonna try to raise money for that. So I mean, you know, anyone to, to try to help out kids, um, especially diseases like that, and. Just run naked in the middle of February, uh, February in their underwear is just it's Hope, got enough balls. Helping you know? kids by getting naked. All right, all right. I but uh, to raise money for it, um, I mean, if the the office is doing that, then uh, I wouldn't mind just uh, donating some money and saving a life. So can I wear my bat, to you. can I wear my Batman tighties? Sure can right if you want to run it. So I mean that's pretty cool for him and uh, cheers to you. So be uh, more than definitely supporting that. So. Yeah, very cool. Actually, I've heard about that run. Oh, the Children's Tumor Foundation. That's it. <laughs> At the end of the email, I just saw it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've heard about it. It sounds interesting and crazy, and it sounds like something you would do in Tremont. Just the perfect area yeah. for it. Um, so, I, 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 quick, quick comment on the on the whole gun control. Uh, I'm all for you know every law that that outlaws every gun, as long as you outlaw murder first, because then if you outlaw murder, you won't have people killing everybody, right? Um, but it's already it's already against the law, and people still kill people. So, and you already kind of mentioned that with drugs are against the law, and it's obviously not laws. Laws only only work on people who obey laws. People who obey laws don't kill people, and they don't shoot up schools. So, not a single gun law ever passed will ever, 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 ever stop anybody from killing anybody that wants to kill them with a gun. And the only way you can do that is with the secret police. And I'd rather not in, in, implement that. So, um, every gun law is pretty dumb. So. Back to more, back to the fun, back yep, to yep, yep. Uh, back to sports. Um, Dale, you kind of stole my thunder a little bit, but I want to specifically raise my beer to Matt Ryan. They call him Matty Ice. I don't get into all that crap, but because um, obviously he hasn't been Matty Ice many times, but he finally came through. He had that, that that monkey on his back where everybody in the sports world likes to like take a few things that have happened and then make some construct some sort of big undeniable truth like he can't win he can't win the playoff game he can't yeah. move forward three times he was there three times he couldn't now the fourth time he has and now nobody will ever talk about the first three and that's why as any really in life in general but especially as an athlete you can't listen to anybody that says you can't do something you just do it you just keep going you keep pushing yep. you get to the playoffs once you're in the playoffs anything can happen fourth time he's in there they actually have a really good shot of, of, of moving forward now given what they've got to face going up so Hats off for uh, for keeping your cool and being the Matty Ice that everybody sort of built you up to be. So, pretty cool. And on that note, this has been a, this has been a blast. And uh, Dale liked the, the two minute drill segment. Dale's yeah. idea, pretty cool. And I am looking right. forward to next week. Awesome. This is a winner right uh, here. Let's, let's, let's all raise it's our a, beers to Ramon here. To Ramon. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Ramon's the, the only, only one, one that acted. Active 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 active. Active. I tell you next week. We'll watch this show. Listen to me, I'll take you places. And what are you gonna say? Uh, I think we should all drink some blue machine. How about that, guys? There you go. Oh yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Get fucked up. And see some Browns win some games. Yeah. Four and twelve Browns season? Nope. Ain't nobody got time for that. Nope. Eight and eight. I'm going I'll down to First Energy Field to watch the games. I went down to Cleveland Browns stadium for losses. I'm going to First Energy Stadium for Energy Field. First Energy Field, the powered by the Cleveland Public Power. First Energy Field at Brown, at Brown Stadium. I like it. It's free money. Take it. Oh wait, so you're saying that it's actually a different power company? Yeah. <laughs> that powers yeah. it. Yeah. 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 So I just put that together. I yeah. understand what you're saying it's before, but I yeah. now it hits you. Now it hits you. Nice. That's pretty the dumb. Feet. <laughs> yeah. The feet That's, don't do it. That's, that's pretty funny, actually. It's the first energy field at the Browns Stadium. Give me truck stop. Go Browns 420 <laughs> at yahoo.com.
Ain't that what uh? Ain't that what